we'll welcome and welcome everybody in the low res program that is watching this and anybody else who isn't here. I appreciate your, your coming out tonight. There's really some pieces we need to kind of get in place as we move forward. So um, feel free to interrupt me anytime, ask questions. We'll try to make this as little of David lecturing in the front of the room and as much of us having a discussion. We will come full circle on this discussion about culture because one of your assignments will be the cultural autobiography and we'll be talking about that near the end. And you'll be responding to some of the same issues if you haven't looked at it now that you've, you've already brought up. Uh, we want to just make sure we're talking about the same kind of thing. So we're going to, the course ICC, Intercultural Communications, we're going to break that apart a little bit. Um, I hate the word deconstruct it. We're going to slightly deconstruct it. Um, anybody recognize what this is? Chapati. No, but you're getting the same right name. Hachapuri. Hachapuri. Yes. It's like one of the best things in the entire world. It's a heart attack is what it is. It is, but it tastes so good. It is. Can I explain it? Yeah, sure. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so it's sort of like a pizza dough-ish, but it's a little bit different. It's, but if you get that kind of general concept, and then um, they melt, you put Georgian cheese in it, and you put it in a wood fire, a wood, 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 wood fire oven, mm -hmm. what it's called. Anyway, so the cheese all melts, and then you pull it out, and then you crack an egg in it, and then you slice two big chunks of butter on either side of the egg, and then you let the egg cook just a little bit in the cheese, and then you mix it all up and you eat it. Wow. It is really quite amazing. It's nothing but a heart attack. It's not, but it's, it tastes, it's a good heart attack. You need to eat like two of those a week and that's it. Yeah. Never eat anything else. Anytime you say cheese, you've got me. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So what do we mean by culture? A couple definitions here. Uh, by the way, this one we posted on Moodle. It's actually posted already, but I haven't opened it. Um, Peace Corps definition. A system of beliefs, values, and assumptions about life that guide behavior and are shared by a group of people, transmitted from generation to generation, usually without explicit instructions. So the idea that we inherit something, and it's not like someone said, this is your culture, and this is what you're going to do, but we just pick it up by osmosis. Um, I am... Um, one of the main ICC theorists talks about a pattern of perceptions, values, attitudes, and behaviors that is accepted and expected by an identity group. An identity group can be a national culture or it can be any other form of uh, identity group. How do you identify with I mentioned that I'm gay. That's an identity group for me. Um, women might be an identity group for you or being part of a certain socioeconomic status might be that. The important word here is pattern. It's not just a loose kind of conglomeration of perceptions and values, but it's a pattern. And the pieces fit together and make sense to you in some way. Usually unarticulated, but they kind of work. Um, so, um, to distinguish culture from personal and universal things, if I'm talking about intercultural communications, I'm, I'm talking about cultural difference. I'm not talking about something that is personal to every individual. I'm talking about something that's accepted by a group of people. So I'm not talking about the fact that um, I have blue eyes and that other people have blue eyes. I'm not talking about the fact that I love Hachapuri. Um, I'm talking about this pattern of things that identify a group. And I'm not talking about something that's universal. And that all people um, love, or all people hate, or all people something. I'm talking about something in between. And the idea of intercultural obviously implies connection or encounter across cultures. This picture, by the way, is also from Georgia. Um, so. And then communication, obviously, um, conveying or transmitting meaning within a particular context. That came from a glossary online. So, um, to me, when we're talking with people 
and uh, you've all demonstrated this by, by talking about your experience and where you've lived, when we're talking with people about who are of a different cultural identity group, and there are many in Morocco, um, I think it's important to walk in with the understanding that it's my bias, that I have my truth and you have your truth. And it's not about saying that my truth is right and your truth is wrong. Um, Niels Bohr said there are two kinds of truth, small truths and great truths. The opposite of a small truth is a falsehood. The opposite of a great truth is another great truth. Uh, I, I love this quote. Um, is that going to be on the Moodle as well? Yes. Yeah, this whole PowerPoint's on the Moodle. So what happens? We come together. Everybody has seen this. What's this? The iceberg. You know the iceberg analogy. <laughs> the idea that, what, what's the idea of the iceberg analogy? There's two main pieces that I usually draw attention there's to. There's stuff that you see and there's stuff that's below the surface. Yeah, most of it's below the surface. Most, most. The other thing I like, which isn't really obvious, but it's sort of a titanic version of the iceberg analogy, which is you don't understand your culture until you clash with another culture. Um, so I have a handout here, um, and you don't have to do anything with this handout at this point, but it might, you might find it interesting. These actually two handouts go together, um, and these are from one of the Peace Corps books. This is a picture of the iceberg, basically showing that most of it's beneath the water. This is a list of features of culture. And the idea on this is not only to think about features of your culture or another culture you're interested in, but also to think about what are the things beneath the water and what are the things above the water. Um, so above the water, what are some examples of things above the water? Things that you see. Race. Hmm? I'm sorry, race. Mm -hmm. Dress. Dress. Traditions that, that are visual, that you can see. So, you know, dancing, celebrations, um, meals. Art. Art, absolutely. Those are the kind of things. The, what are the kind of things that are beneath the water? Habits. Habits that are not visual. You know, or where do the habits come from? You know, it's... it's like the holidays, the way holidays are. Yeah, but, you know, there, there's two pieces of it. That's really important. So, if I send you a Christmas card, that's visual. That's above the water. But the meaning of the Christmas card to me and to you is below the water. Right? So, other examples? Values. Values. Absolutely. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about some of those models of values. But what's a cultural value? What's a value in the U.S.? Work hard. Work hard. Mm -hmm. Sure. What's a, what's a value in some place you traveled to that contrasts with a U.S. value? Yeah. Eat lunch for an hour. Eat lunch for an hour. Yeah, lunch, connect, talk with people, relax, yeah. Show up for meetings the time that you scheduled them. <laughs> Show up for a meeting the time that you scheduled them. Yeah. As opposed to? Africa time. And not showing up for meetings even though the time was scheduled. Yeah. Or showing up many, many hours later. Yeah. If you show up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll talk about that. We'll actually talk about that a little bit when we talk about um, monochronic and polychronic. Mm -hmm. in the Perceptions of right and wrong. I've been reading this book, where you can't see the title of it. It's called Morocco, the Islamist, the Islamist Awakening and Other Challenges. I mean, one of the things that's been going on in Morocco for the last 50 years has been the different definitions of what is right and what is wrong. I mean, that happens here. It happens in Brattleboro, for God's sake. But, um, talking about values for God's sake. <laughs>